Welcome to Mark of the Machines and the next installment of Rules Tolerating Frequent Misapplication. Tonight's topic is Cavalry and all that surrounds it, with subtopics like Light Cavalry, Cavalry Charge, Impact Attacks, Ride By Attacks, and a short revisit of Tall in the Saddle. Enjoy! I don't think we need to debate the valiancy of cavalry, cavalry rules, what they can do different than infantry and such. If giant steam powered robots get their own rules, then it's fair to give cavalry their own, isn't it? So what in general is the difference between cavalry and normal foot sloggers, very briefly? It comes in regular and light cavalry tastes, higher speed value, higher armor, health, smaller units, more expensive, hit harder, real cavalry hit even harder. Oh, and they often have anatomically correct horses. <coughs> that actually covers all the basics. Besides that, they function normally as all the other routes. The trick lies with the added details. To begin, all cavalry models also have tall in the saddle, which allows them to ignore intervening models with spaces smaller than their own in melee. For the details on that, check RTFM number 1 line of sight. Light cavalry is even faster than regular cavalry because they can, after their activations have been completed, make another advance of up to 5 inches. They, however, cannot make right by attacks or impact attacks, though they can make initial attacks with their mounts without need for combat rider. Also, when making additional attacks, a light cavalry model can make them with its mount. I want to see a light cavalry warcaster. For all we know, it's the horses that kill, not the riders. That is also true for real cavalry, though differently. All the types of cavalry can make cavalry charges. Don't forget, they also both ignore models with bases smaller than their own when declaring their charge targets, and they both get plus 2 on their charge attack rolls as if they all had powerful charge. Important to know, especially regarding what, it, what I'll look at at the end. The main difference lies with the impact attacks. When the mount gained enough momentum, that is charged for 3 plus inches, it can do one impact attack during the cavalry charge. In other words, it can simply crash through one line to get to the, to the ones behind. Free strikes are applied normally. In rules terms, you can charge a model behind other models, but you will be stopped by those intervening models. In the case of real cavalry, however, the mount will interrupt movement, do an impact attack against everyone in its melee range, and if that clears the way, it will resume its original movement. When an impact attack is done, it's done against each target in within melee range, with the power of the mount. Let it be said here, since it is a plain power attack, effects that add to the model's strength will have no effect, like positive charge or Vladimir experienced feats but effects that add to the damage dice or roll do. Which means that these Iron Fang Ulans under Fury during the Butcher's Feed turn will hit like Scud Rockets with an average damage of 25. Which should even enable them to crash through multi wounders, even though maybe not fresh ones. Once the impact attack is resolved, the original charge is resumed and the target that was thinking himself safe probably has crapped himself twice over. The movement can even be continued if the charge target is already within reach. However, if the impact attack does not take out the target that blocks the charge lane, the movement cannot be continued. So if the charge target is not already within reach, that's the end of the model's activation. Now let's come to talk about right by attacks. Now that RTFM has covered line of sight, formation and cavalry, we can finally address this topic where all earlier lections culminate into. I'll try to keep it simple enough. Right by attack is an order for cavalry units. It says simply that you move up to your speed value. You can interrupt this movement at any point, shoehorn your combat action or even actions in, then resume your movement. Let that sink in first. Here's where formation kicks in. Since you move troopers individually, it is next to pre-programmed that they will leave formation. Usually they would then not be able to do anything. However, right by attack explicitly says that they can still act even if out of formation. I know you want to know what the, the, all the mean tricks, so I'll tell you what this means. Actually a lot, but I'll rephrase it for the most significant things. A. Scoot and shoot. You can move, fight and stab. And move. 
the ones profiting the most are Donga Dasters with their freaking gun lances, Storm Lances for their electrics, Steelhead Cavalry for their guns and their reach axes. B. You can bushwhack. Yes, essentially you can fire and then move off. It is my estimation that the Donga Desta Thane will certainly be Prince of the Battlefield Bullies. C. You do, since your movement has not ended completely, not trigger end of movement effects like Montador's feet, the old witch's feet, defensive strike, counter charge, counter slam and watcher. And you can safely leave the danger zone even if enough movement remains. I think the Steelheads once again profit the most for their reach weapons, which allows them to harass non-reach models to death and ride back to safety. Exemplar Avengers under Vindictus True Path sound also very ugly. Or Horde's Cavalry without, with all those outrageous speed buffs like Praetorian Ferox with Savagery on. If it works, and I think it does, right by it clearly states the model makes a full advance. They have a 13, have 13 inches of interruptible movement and then a 5 inch jump. Luckily they only have power 12. What also profits a lot are cavalry models with other special movement effects. There aren't that many. Which brings me to the final point. Now after the part for all players, here's my ridiculous statement of the month. I don't think that Jeremiah Cray belongs to the bottom of signal casters, just like Lady Zerkova does not in Cardo or Verse in the Retribution. It's one of those castles which, when you get the hang of him, will make your opponents hate him and you probably along with, along for fielding him, though in a different way than say Epic Haley. Why? Because Grey has Iron Horse, which says, all his jacks gain cavalry rules, all light jacks gain light cavalry rules in addition, which means they and he, for sitting on a horse, have access to all shenanigans just pointed out in addition to the usual ones. He additionally has parry, so it is next to impossible to pin him down or stop him. He has the full tilt upkeep, which makes either a light warjack ridiculously fast or a heavy fast as cavalry. He has mage side against stealth and forests, and easy rider against rough terrain and obstacles. He has a feat that for the most part makes a knockdown unreliable at best. He also has pursuit for more movement, guided fire. Oh, and Arcane Blast, which only has the use of blasting and copper reels away from a range. There are certain synergies with several warjacks which I want to mention here. First, the Hunter. Due to the extended control range and parry, makes for an awesome light jack to use the light cavalry rules with. The control range extension is very handy because of Kray's rather small control area. Second, the Defender and Cyclone can simply jubilee at ride by attacks, if mainly for the bushwhackability and the scooting. The scooting is best applied by the Thunderhead, who can move to get a line of sight, do a pulse and double coil, and then move to a more beneficial position. Third, the Cyclone and Sentinel also benefit the most from guided fire. The Charger not so much, so he's better when the battle group is more melee heavy. Fourth, Cygnus Heavies have impact attacks of power 11 or 12, which is good. Full tilt and horsepower can launch them from really far away. Fifth, however, Warden Heavy turns right by attack into a perversion, the Hammersmith. Under full tilt, at move 3 focus, he can move into any danger zone into contact with a hard enemy for example, attack, beat back, attack, beat back, smite, follow up, his way up to 7 inches, ahead, then resume his original movement. Granted, he'll be out of Kray's control area, but hello, we're talking up to 19 inches of nearly unmolested movement. If you need somebody to simply crack Zerkova's bubble economy, he's the man. Uh, he's the machine. Devout it. And the others? Let's just say, stop. Hammer time. So, I hope this issue was helpful to you, even if it was a little light on examples. Next, rules tolerating frequent misapplications will have the funniest thing th things in the game. Power attacks. But we will more likely have a battle report in between. Until then, enjoy.